Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Sunday, November 5th. So I hope you have all had a good week. I have had a relatively good week. I had a dental procedure on Thursday and I was off of work and I was so very grateful for that. Um, mouth is all healed up now. And I got some diamond painting done, got some stitching done. Had a few little purchases, books, movies, all the normal stuff to talk about. So I had a bunch of questions this week. So the first one was the mesh ruler. Uh, this person asked, can I multi-place or single place only? I only single place. So I am not sure if you can multi-place. I want to say I recall a video that Mrs. Uh, Coffee did that I think you can multi-place on these rollers, but don't quote me. I would suggest to search on YouTube to try to see if you can find the video. I only single place and it works beautifully, obviously. Um, okay. Do I drape the completed section of my diamond painting over the back of the table? I do. And let me try to take you guys over there and show you what I'm talking about. I'll do that when I show you the progress on the diamond painting. But yes, I do. There's a space in between the slanted part of my desk and the back of the desk that I put the diamond painting down there when, as I go along. Okay, the clamps clamps that are on the table that I got from Bella de Art Nicole. This person asked, could you roll it up with the diamonds on it? Because this person starts at the bottom of their diamond painting instead of the top. So essentially they would actually what you could probably do. I don't see why not, but I feel like those clamps are made to roll up the part that you're not diamond painting. So if you start at the bottom and you would have all of this rolled up at the top, put the clamps at the top. That's an idea, right? You could put them at the top of your workstation or your, um, why is that piece of hair just, or at the top of, um, your light pad, if you, you know what I mean? I don't know. I would play with it, but I, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to roll the, with the diamonds up in that. I don't see why not. Okay. Someone asked, where did I get my cover minder board? I'm going to take you in there and show you. Let's just do that now, because I feel like if I don't do it, I'm going to forget. Okay. So I actually have two boards for my cover minders. And I don't know if this was what this person was talking about. These are magnetic boards I bought from Ikea many, many years ago. I have two of them. Now I had cleaned off and gotten rid of a lot of old cover minders. And I just kept the ones that I really, really loved. So I only have that many now, but I, don't know if Ikea still sells the Charvis when she graduated high school. I don't know if um, Ikea still sells those boards. But okay, let me show you. Do you see this space right here? So when, as I diamond paint and, I, and it comes up, I put it right in here. And it falls through and it goes to the back. So yeah, that's, that's how I do that. Okay. All right. Oh, I should have kept you right over there <laughs> because the next question was, What is the storage I use for diamond painting as in my credenza? Yes, I use uh, the credenza. I have it, their Facebook page linked in the description box. And I also did an unboxing of it when I got it. So if you search on my channel, put in like Stitcherisa credenza, it will come up because I completely 
unboxed it, showed it, all of that. And someone said, so I pour the diamonds directly in the trays of the credenza. So they said, when I run out, do I just open another bag and pour it in there? And that's exactly what happens. So one more time, and we're going to look at the credenza. This is the credenza. And I keep the doors open all the time because I'm diamond painting. It doesn't matter. But yeah, so what happens is I go by the key. So the key on here, like number 35, that's the number, what's it, 3768? 35. Three, seven. Yes. So that's the number. That's the number of diamonds, you know, the color of diamonds that I pour in there. So yes, I pour them in here. I diamond paint right out of here when I run out, because like, especially for this Hannah Lynn with a lot of black, what I do is in this Ikea cart in the very top, I keep my extra diamonds in there for whatever diamond painting I'm working on. So I would just pull another bag open it up, pour them in that tray and just keep going. Yes, that is exactly. And I realized that there are new people all the time. So not everyone was around when I got the credenza. It is actually got it in March of this year, ordered it in December. It takes months. It's beautiful. It's one of my, is probably the favorite tool that I've ever purchased for diamond painting besides that desk. Well worth it. And then the last question, someone asked about two strands on perforated paper on 14 count. If you buy a Mill Hill kit, they recommend three strands. To me, three strands, it's too bulky and too fiddly to work with three strands. I do two strands on 14 count and I've never had a problem because just like uh, Cassandra from Autumn Lane Stitchery in her group, someone asked that same question and she said, you know, cross stitch, any kind of art, it's not meant to be looked at this close. You're supposed to be looking at it, the three foot rule essentially. So if you stitch on black, you stitch black thread on any kind of paper, you're gonna be able to see the paper through it a little bit, just like fabric. But if you look at it from back, it's gonna look great. So keep that in mind. Two strands for me is what I do. All right, movies and TV. I have been watching some other movies that I have seen before on Tubi this week. I watched The Devil's Advocate with Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino. Love that movie. I've seen that movie many, many times. Clerks 2. So this is kind of a raunchy adult comedy. Uh, the first Clerks I liked also. I just needed like some comic relief that day I watched that. So I watched that on there. And then last night when I was stitching, I got to the point too where I actually wanted to see a movie that I hadn't seen before. I watched this movie called Wakefield and it starred Jennifer Garner and Brian Cranston, who was in Breaking Bad. They were married. He has this high paying job, like he's a financier or on Wall Street or something. And she works at an art gallery. They live in this big house. They have two twin daughters who are 16, I think. He takes the train home, Grand Central. He takes the train home every day. He is taking the train home this one day and the train breaks down and the people have to get out and actually walk home. And he wasn't that far from home. But when he gets home, there's a raccoon that's getting in their trash and he chases it away, but it winds up going up the stairs. They have a garage connected to the house or it's, or it's like, a separate structure on their property and there's like an attic above it. The raccoon winds up going in there and you can tell he is dissatisfied in his marriage and he chases his raccoon up there and he's like, I'm just not going to go home tonight. He can see the family in the house, his family through this big window that's in this attic. He winds up, I don't want to give away the whole movie, but he winds up living in, in that attic for like eight, 10 months. 
yeah, like he just completely abandons his life. And at the end of the movie, when it ended, I was like, no, I need to know what happened. I don't like it to be left open. Tell me, tell me what's happening. But what the movie was heartbreaking but on some level relatable because I think everyone at one time or another has thought what it would be like to just completely leave your current situation, right? And just start over. Um, yeah, this movie was quite wow. Just wow. And then today I started watching one of my favorite movies of all time. And I consider this somewhat of a Christmas movie because it opens up and it's on Christmas Eve. Um, Family Man with Nicolas Cage and Tia Leone. So good. And it really makes you, that movie makes me stop and think about everyone's definition of purpose in your life, what success means. Such a good movie. But that was all. Oh, and I did watch a little bit more of Dance Moms. I'm still on season five, but I'm to the point where they are in Australia. So. Um, there's only, I think eight seasons, so I don't have that much more to go, but there's a lot of episodes in each season. Oh, and I also watched American horror story has had four stories done for Halloween. I watched the first one the other night called bestie liked it last night. I watched Daphne. That was good too. There's two more. So I am actually, when I go downstairs after I stitch or do whatever, when I go downstairs, I lay in bed and I actually watch them fully to pay attention because those, I feel like if you look away, you'll miss something. So I don't like to diamond paint or stitch when I'm watching those. Okay. Books. So I finished temper by Lane Fargo and absolutely loved it. At the end, your mouth is hanging open. Yeah. Loved it. So I have read both of the books that this person has written. Love them both. And then one of you recommended a book by David Ellis called Look Closer. And they said, go into it blind, meaning don't read the synopsis. And so I did. It's so good. It's a long book, 449 pages, but I'm already over a hundred pages into it. Highly recommend that too. Give me your recommendations. You guys know someone else recommended another book and I put that sample on my Kindle. Um, yeah, sometimes it's good to go into reading a book blind without reading the synopsis. Also, um, Kirsten Moglin came out with a new book. So I have that, um, the sample, because she took her books off of Kindle Unlimited. So you have to purchase them now. And yeah, so I've been enjoying reading very much. And I also still reading my devotional book from Charles Stanley. And I actually purchased one of his books called finding peace. And I love it. I'm reading that one too at the same time, because the chapters are kind of short. So I'll read a chapter once a day in that book. All right. Purchases. So I finished and I will show you that in a second. I finished the fall Primrose Cottage Stitches piece that I was working on. I had had the idea that I wanted to fully finish it on a cutting board. I bought the cutting board from Hobby Lobby. However, when I went to finish said piece, it wasn't coming together how I wanted it to. And I said, you know what I'm going to start doing? I think I wanted to start doing scrapbook layouts again, because I really like working with the different elements on a scrapbook page. And working on perforated paper fits perfectly in with that. But I wanted a way to display it where I could pop out the back of the frame and put in the new page when I finish a piece. So I had an idea of getting a frame that I could put on my office door so I can see my current finish there. I found this frame on clearance on scrapbook.com. So this fits a 12 by 12 scrapbook page, but it's magnetic. The back is magnetic. So this whiteboard, watch, it just pops out very easy. Magnets, it's held by magnets. So you put your scrapbook page in here, put the back on, and then when you want to change it out, it's very, very quick. I love this and cannot wait to 
I'm waiting for the scrapbook paper to come in from scrapbook.com for the fall piece. But I am, that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to do it. And I will put the frame on my door using the 3M picture hangers. So I'll be able to pull it off very easy and put it back on. So that's going to be a really easy way for me to finish stuff, I think. Okay. I did purchase Primrose Cottage Stitches. They're two new releases, which this one is Christmas Trees and Stitching Please. Absolutely love that. I love their pattern so much. I love everything about it. If you buy the paper pattern, it's on very good glossy cardstock. And we all know how much I love, and I'll show you a little piece, how big their patterns are. I really love that. It's I make a color copy of this on cardstock, but um, love the aesthetic of their patterns. And then this one, I just love it so much because I know I can stitch this on white for a freighted paper. It is their Christmas Quaker. Love, love, love that. And the floss that they use is classic Colorworks Cherry Cobbler. But I think I have some color in cotton red still in here that I think I'm going to use for this. It's like a bright red. Love that so very much. I love their Quaker series because they have on the back here the autumn one that I just did. Love it so much. So purchase those. And that was it for that. So finishes and whips. So like I said, I did finish the autumn. What the hell was this called? I can't remember what this was called. Autumn Alphabet, maybe? I love stitching this so much. My favorite was this pumpkin because it uses Classic Colorworks Fallen Leaves, and I love that color so much. Now, you're probably wondering what this is. This, I've already put the adhesive on it um, through my Xyron Creative Station. So this is already backed with cardstock. So if I peel this off, this is sticky on the back. I'm waiting until I get my scrapbook page. So that's why I have this just like this. So I will keep this in my little file bin right there. But I did start my next piece, which is another Primer's Cottage Stitches piece. I love fall most of all. I am stitching mine on Sea Mist Blue, 14 count perforated paper, using all of the call for threads. And this is how far I've gotten the acorns. And then I started stitching some of the letters. Love this. Loved working on this. I worked on this yesterday. That's what I got done yesterday when I watched that movie. And like I said, this is the way that I figure out the center of it. Now, again, I just, I draw a line, draw a line and where it intersects is the center. Very, very easy to do that. So I'm enjoying working on that. And this is what it's going to look like finished. I love those little pumpkins and the crow and all that. But you can see what I've done. Most the acorns love. So I don't know where. I think I'm going to go over here and do this. So it all go up here, go up here. I just try to do what I can easily count and not mess up. So, yeah. That's what is happening there. Okay, and then I did work on poinsettia pixie. So I'm going to love this diamond painting so much. Let me flip you around. What I got done, I got done one section for with the mesh ruler. I got done that section. Isn't it gorgeous? Love it so much. It's going to look so, so pretty. The colors are amazing. And so then I have the mesh roller down and that's the next section I'll complete. So I'll be able to complete some of the actual poinsettia, which very excited to see that. I think I am really going to love working with the, with no release papers or anything like that and having the clamps and um, I'm not sure why that, oh, there we go. I had, it looked like it was bent, but it's not. Um, yeah, loving that so very much. And yeah, I so I diamond painted on Thursday when I came back from my dental appointment. My mouth was hurting. And I had the day off, which was good. And yeah, 
I sat and I diamond painted and it was an enjoyable time. Okay, the last thing that I wanna talk about, well, not the last thing, I'm gonna mention this and then we're gonna talk about Colorado Cross Stitcher's newest email. She puts out the best like little tips and stuff in there. So I'm probably gonna be talking about those for a while going forward. I bought a new wax burner. So I used to be a candle person. However, what I have found, candles can be messy with the wax, with the wick and just lighting them and then extinguishing the flame and all of that. I love the cleanliness and the ease of a tart burner or a wax melt burner. So I had one that Bill bought me for Christmas two years ago. It's a Fox. I actually have it in here on the bookshelf. Oh, you see it right there. See it next to my printer. I decided I wanted to get one for my office because I love to have something burning, smelling in there. So I got one, Amazon has a ton. I found one for $12.99. Now the dilemma I was coming up against, and I have one downstairs too in our TV watching area, is how to get the wax out of it when you need to change it. Because the wax in a wax melt, it never burns down. The scent just goes away. And I would say it takes a good like, takes a good two days or something of solid burning for the smell to go away. And I used to let it solidify and then turn on the wax melt just enough to get the bottom warm, where then I could like try to move the disc around and pop it out. So I said, you know what, I'm going to look on YouTube and I'm going to look at some videos of how people remove wax from safely where there's no residue or anything. So this person actually, when they were done burning the wax or done, you know, with the, with that wax and they wanted to change it, they put a piece of yarn in it. So it was completely in it and let it solidify. And then they put the tray, this whole tray, they put it in the freezer. And then when they pulled it out of the freezer, they were able to just pull the yarn and it popped out the whole thing. And I said, that's quite interesting. So I don't have any yarn, but I have scraps of fabric. So this is what I did. I, when I was done with this, cause I've burned this for a couple of days. I said, you know what I'm going to put, I just cut a piece of fabric, put it in there, put this in the freezer. Now, Bill and I went out to dinner on Friday and I had this in there on Friday and I forgot about it. And we got home and I was like, oh crap, it's been in the freezer for like an hour. It worked. I was stunned. This is perfectly clean, no wax residue. And now I can just throw this away. How did I not know this? So a tip, this works swimmingly. I loved it so much. I was like, I have to show them that. Now you guys may have been aware of that and known it, and it may not be something new to you. My mind blown, blown away. Now you can also buy liners for these, and then you can just throw away the liner. I have a ton of fabric. I can just cut strips and put a piece of fabric in it or even a piece of thread. I could have used a piece of thread, but when I pulled that out, you should have seen my face. I said to Bill, oh, it worked. I couldn't believe it. Okay. So the last thing that I want to mention is Colorado Cross Stitcher had some tips in here on how to find more time for stitching. Because don't we all want that? on some level, right? There are five things. So I'm going to name them and we'll chat about them for a minute. Okay. Number one, make stitching or any of your preferred hobbies a priority. You know, it's good for you. You know, you need a certain amount of downtime. You know, you feel good after you've had time to work on it. I would say it's even more important to carve out this time during the busy holidays when things are a bit crazy consider it a mental health appointment with yourself. Absolutely. I feel like, I mean, I'm a perfect case in point though, that when work gets really busy or if I work really late a couple days in a row, I may go a couple days. Like I, there was a couple days last week, I didn't stitch at all. I didn't even start working on that piece again until yesterday. 
So I didn't stitch all week. Yeah. Number two, find smaller pockets of time during the day. Maybe sneak in some stitches during your lunchtime or while you are waiting in the carpool line. You know, the times when you might typically scroll on your phone. And you know, that's another little topic, um, social media. You know, if I didn't have so many connections on Facebook and Instagram, I would probably get rid of those apps, truly. Last night for the first time, so in my bedroom, I have a charger for my iPad and for my phone. And I normally used to keep my phone on my nightstand, which was just within arm's reach. Last night, I said, you know what? I'm going to put my phone across the room on my dresser. And it made all the difference just in that one night where I wasn't scrolling on my phone and I got to bed at a reasonable time. And then when I got up in the morning, I just grabbed my phone. And in the morning when I get up with Bill to make his lunch, the alarm will go off. I'll just get out of bed, turn it off. Yeah, you know, I really try when we're downstairs at night too, I'm not on my phone. Really conscious of that now. And my phone gives like stats of how long you're on it and it updates it weekly. This week, it said I was on my phone two hours and four minutes less than last week. So let's go, right? Yeah, I only check Instagram and Facebook once a day now. And even the comments on like YouTube once a day. Really, really try. And I deleted Facebook off of my iPad, so I can't get on it there. I did leave Messenger because sometimes I will get messages from my mom or Jill or whoever. Okay. But yeah, find smaller pockets of time during the day, even if it's 10 minutes. So there are some times where I will get done work at like three or four and I'm tired because it's been a long day but I want to get some diamond painting done. So literally I will listen to maybe 20 minutes. I will listen to one of Charles Stanley's podcasts and they're like 19 minutes. I'll diamond paint until that's the end of that. Little pockets of time or even do one, and I've said this before, do one length of thread that will at least, if even, if, even if that's all the time that you had, because I know that there are people that have, excuse me, much busier lives than me kids, pets, we don't have any of that. So their time is even more limited than mine. One length of thread, something, something. Okay. <laughs> and number three, and I didn't realize this was going to be on there until I started talking about it. She says, speaking of scrolling, try limiting, limiting some of your screen time to gain some stitching time. Yes. You know, I've been trying here recently, I want to say in the last couple of days, to be much more intentional with my life and with my time. Where in the morning, I get a cup of coffee, I sit down, I intentionally read my devotional book. Intentionally to me means not multitasking, doing one thing literally at a time. And also trying to do things slower. So in my house, I did a lot of stuff this morning before this video. So I don't know if you guys live in a state where there's a time change, but we do in Maryland. So we gained an hour today. Clocks fell back an hour. So I was up at 6.30 and I said, you know what? I am going to take advantage of this. I did a lot of house stuff, but I was intentional on each task. So I got up, I changed the clocks in our house so they reflected the time difference, put laundry in. Then I made Bill's tea, emptied the dishwasher, cut up vegetables because we're having hamburgers today. So I cut up like lettuce, tomato, onion. I made cookies. I emptied the trash. I did a little bit of cleaning. I did so much stuff, but was intentional and didn't rush through them because there are some mornings when I am pressed for time before work. I'm rushing through tasks and I don't want to feel that anymore in my body. Yeah. So intentional, trying to slow down with doing that kind of stuff. So she says, maybe check your social media or whatever once or twice a day and put the rest of the time into stitching. She says, this is me. I have made more of an effort to stay off my phone and stay on my stitching in the evenings and it has helped. Yes, I have been actually doing the phone thing with trying to stay off of it for a couple of months now. It's easier said than done, but I feel like I've gotten better at it. Okay, number four, set some stitching goals. 
Sometimes when you have it written down, a list of the things you want to get done before years end, it helps you to stay on top of it a bit more, but don't do this list if, you, list if you'll just feel more pressured. Yes, and Terry was talking about this in her video about just being able to do what she wants. I mean, ultimately this hobby, whether you diamond paint, stitch, quilt, whatever, it's supposed to be enjoyable. If you are placing all of these crazy demands on yourself with it, how is that enjoyable? So I don't beat myself up too much anymore if I go days without stitching, which I did this week. It just, and you know, you know me too. I think one of the reasons why I had trouble getting into stitching this week is because I was starting the project. Remember I told you it's hard for me to get started. But now that I've started this, when I see it, I sit down and I'm like, okay, let's keep going. It's easier to keep going for me once I have some done. And then the last one, number five, set up a stitching group for yourself. You can do this in person or over Zoom. Carve out time as often as you and your group want to get together. The accountability is good and the friendships are wonderful. You know, the Tangle Stitching Group, they have a Zoom every Wednesday. And they've had it for a long time. And I keep telling myself I'm going to get in there and I never do. And I don't know if it's because they do it from seven to 10 on Wednesday evenings. And most of the time I'm working till 6.30. Bill doesn't go to bed till eight or 8.30. And by then I'm just, I'm tired. You know, I don't really feel like per se interacting. So I've never gone in there, but they all love it. And so if you're able to do something like that, I would highly recommend it. You know, because this craft Yes, it is solitary. It's enjoyable to do on your own. But the people I have encountered in this community doesn't compare. Like it, I've made such wonderful friendships at the retreats from my channel that I can't imagine where I would be with my stitching now if I had never started my channel. Yeah, um, it's, it's really amazing, I think, um, the community for both of these crafts. So I hope you guys have all had a good weekend, that you have a good week. Do all the things intentionally. Read, diamond paint, all of that. So as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.